pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, a fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among you, you own yourselves, will arise, arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with the tears. Amen. Uh, now I'm preaching uh, with the title that to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood from the scripture we had. Uh, in the Miletus, uh, not that far from uh, Ephesus, however, he met the elders uh, from the church in Ephesus to save the time to get into uh, the Jerusalem before the Pentecost. And uh, he is now preaching the farewell sermon, the last sermon, uh, because of uh, his departure from this, uh, from uh, the elders. He, he will never see them uh, uh, face to face. And not only he, but uh, everyone knows that. So they were all very much uh, careful in preaching and uh, listening. And uh, what he says today is, out of the four uh, sessions of uh, the, you know, the preachings that I do uh, uh, in, in the four uh, Sundays, uh, his preaching will be divided into four sessions, and today would be the third session that I'm preaching. Here, what he says is, uh, be alert is number one a commandment or a, like a recommendation, and number two, remember. So be alert and remember. The two uh, recommendations or teachings be highlighted in today's preaching. Uh, be alert is given because of themselves, uh, the elders. Here the elders are the overseers, means the ministers, new ministers after Paul. So they would be the second generation ministers uh, to the church in Ephesus. They are supposed to be alert. Be careful for themselves and for the, all the flocks. Because the church was the one that, that purchased by the blood of God here. Uh, by God's blood, uh, you know, the church was obtained. And the Holy Spirit uh, made them uh, to be the overseers. Holy Spirit gave them the missions for the ministry. So now we find here uh, Holy Spirit and God and the Jesus Christ mentioned. Uh, Jesus Christ actually is mentioned in the point that God obtained the church by his blood. Uh, it is not, uh, you know what, uh, a familiar expression that uh, God obtained the church by his blood. But as you know, the blood of Lord Jesus Christ, who crucified upon the cross, the church was obtained by the blood of Jesus Christ. So here, in the expression that God obtained the church by his own uh, blood, uh, implication is made here. It is Jesus Christ in, in here. So the triad God, the Holy Spirit, and the Father God, and the Son God be mentioned here in the church and in the calling of the second generation ministers, the elders, overseers, uh, who are meeting uh, here at Paul in Miletus. So brothers and sisters, we all know that the church is where we find the experience of the theophany, the appearance of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the triune God. And uh, in which we all come together and in which we become the children of God. Amen. That's why uh, ministers, overseers are supposed to be alert, be careful. That's 
first, uh, first commandment or uh, the teaching of Paul. Second one is because of the after departure of Paul from the church, uh, the wolves will come in and they will uh, uh, you know, uh, twist uh, in the teachings of the church within so that, that they will all uh, make uh, uh, the congregation to make their own, their position. And uh, so it is kind of uh, uh, you know, uh, the crisis happening within the church. How that happened? Because of uh, false prophets teaching and preaching in the church. The church will be divided and the people, the flocks will be scattered. So that will happen as Paul is mentioning. So you all need to remember me that, verse 31 says, that I was there together with you over three years, day and night, that I taught you, that I preached you, and with my tears. So the commandment of remembrance of me, the Paul himself, was made because of the sharp contrast to uh, the uh, false prophets who will come after departure of Paul. So uh, the uh, second generation ministers are supposed to remember in comparison between Paul, the true prophet, and the false prophets who will come in and uh, they will twist the teachings of Lord Jesus Christ and make the flock, the sheep of Lord Jesus Christ, to make their own. But Paul is now saying, I do not own you by my name, but you are the sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is the way that he is true shepherd. Uh, you know what? Uh, appointed by Lord Jesus Christ. A true shepherd is the one not to, uh, do not want to own the sheep, but lead the sheep to the Lord Jesus Christ, the true shepherd. So this is what we find today's uh, preaching the session in the fourth, uh, third session of his preaching. That number one, we all need to be alert. We all, that means we, uh, even pastors and elders and uh, you know, deacons and all church members, be called uh, for uh, the witnesses of all of the world. So we have this mission that we need to be alert, understanding that the church is obtain the thing obtained obtained by the blood of God the Lord Jesus Christ called by the Holy Spirit we all need to understand this number two uh, we need to remember what Paul did for three years day and night teaching with tears he did all the best he laid down his life for the mission and that is the way a true prophet is doing a true minister is doing in sharp contrast to false prophets who are taking care of only their lives, only they themselves. They do for their prophets. If not bound the prophets, they will leave, discard the ship. So this is the way that Paul is demonstrating himself as the minister. But brothers and sisters, remember this. Paul is not the ultimate model for the ministry of the second generation because Paul is now leaving the church. In the departure of the church, he is preaching for the last time. He will never see them again. That means he is now leave the church to the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ and the word of God. To the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ and to the word of God, he is leaving the church and he is depart, departing from the church. That means he is not having the church as his personal possession, but he is leading the church to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is leading the church, the flock, the sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ to the Christ. That is the way of uh, pastors, shepherds, prophets, uh, ministry. Brothers and sisters, we have two models proposed by Paul in this preaching who is the true prophet, true shepherd. Number one, himself. He says, 
Not that you look at the moon, not my finger, as many philosophers and teachers in uh, human history uh, proposed. Don't look at me, but uh, see what I'm, look at, uh, or, or in what, hear what I'm teaching. So they are uh, escaping from the reality that they are supposed to show themselves to the people as uh, the model of what, it, what they are talking about, what they are teaching. They are not, in, the sense, in a sense, responsible for what they are saying. But Jesus is not the case at all. And also, disciples of Lord Jesus Christ, the shepherd that Jesus appointed, are not the kind of uh, the model at all. All they needed, you look at me as I imitate Lord Jesus Christ, you imitate me. We all need to speak like this. Boldly speaking, you imitate me, you see me. I am the believer, and I am the disciple of Lord Jesus Christ. See, and you follow me as I do. As I do. This is the way Paul is saying, come on, I am your model. Remember what I have done last three years in Ephesus, day and night teaching with tears. However, Paul is not the ultimate model that he is proposing. Instead, it is the Lord Jesus Christ. Eventually, when uh, he met the Lord Jesus in the Damascus, when Jesus called him first, ever since he became the servant of Lord Jesus Christ, ever since he decided to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters, this is the way that we follow the Lord Jesus Christ, who said, if you follow me, you deny yourself, and you carry your own cross and uh, follow me. Now we all Christians are the ones following the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not independent, but dependent. We are following the Lord Jesus Christ. So ultimately, Paul is proposing the Lord Jesus as the model of the ministry. As he is departing from the church at Ephesus, he is preaching that you imitate the Lord Jesus Christ. Imitation of God has been a long time theme of the Christian church. And imitation of the Lord Jesus Christ is the long time theme also for the church members. This is the day that we hear also uh, in the theme that the Paul is preaching. Especially, let us go into verse 28. Who said, Paul said, pay careful attention to yourselves. Pay careful attention to yourselves means you check yourself who you are and you know what are you doing. Be careful in the speech and in the behaviors. And to all the flock, and also you take care of the flock that you are taking care of in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Yes, by the Pentecost, 120 members of the church in Jerusalem, they were all overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit, and they were sent to the ends of the earth as the witnesses of the Holy Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, this is the one that we make the church as the body of Christ Jesus, the Head of the church is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And Jesus Christ obtained with his own blood. With his own blood means his, with his own Lord Jesus Christ's blood who crucified himself upon the cross. Brothers and sisters, here, Holy Spirit has called the elders of the Ephesus to be the overseers. The elders it's not the elders we confined, I mean, we are, you know, defined today. Actually, elders, there are two uh, kinds of elders. One is teaching elders, and the other one is ruling elders. Uh, teaching elders be the ministers, preaching, teaching, uh, pastors. And the ruling elders are the elders who are uh, 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 serving the church as, uh, uh, you know what, uh, uh, governors or like uh, ruling uh, uh, the people, agents. So now what uh, Paul is uh, meeting, the people who uh, Paul is meeting was the teaching elders. 
the next generation uh, ministers. Now he is making exhortation to them that keep watch. Keep watch. Uh, ministers are supposed to keep watch for themselves. And this is the essence of the life. Be careful and be holy. Uh, separated from the worldly interest, but attached to God all the times. To be godly means thinking God again and again, day and the night, with tears in the ministry. This is the way that we all need to keep alert. Do you remember what Jesus said to Peter in chapter 21 of John, according to the Gospel according to John? There, Jesus said to Peter, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, and feed my sheep. Three times commissions he made to Peter. After he is asking three questions, do you love me, Peter? And Peter answered, yes, I do. However, my love is inferior to the love you are asking. My, my love is but pillows, not agape. However, Jesus Christ gave him the mission, knowing what kind of love he has. That means God, Jesus is together with Peter, helping him to do that. You know what? Jesus knew that Peter had not agape, the perfect lover. So, it is the Peter who need to, needs to have, who needs to have the support, the help of Lord Jesus Christ. The same thing found in us, my brothers and sisters. Who are you? Are you elders? Are you pastors? Are you deacons? Jesus knows everything, the weakness of you. Jesus knows everything of you. When Jesus still gives you the mission, you go to the end of the earth and preach that I taught you. That does not mean that I don't care of you, whatever you do. No, that is not the case. As Mark chapter 16 and Matthew chapter 28, what Jesus promised as he sent his disciples to the end of the earth is, yes, I will be with you to the end of the ages. To the end of, to the, end of the ages, I will be with you. And also in Mark chapter 16 says, Jesus performed the signs, the miracles, when they preached the Gospels. So Jesus supported the disciples when they preached, when they taught. This is the way that Jesus is sending us, even though our love is not perfect. Like Peter said, I am, what I am doing is pillows, not agape. Still Jesus is sending us. When Paul was in a Roman uh, prison, he wrote four episodes in the first imprisonment. And out of four, we find Titus. Chapter 1, let me quote, make a, a quotation from verses 7 to 10. For an overseer, as God's steward, must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or drunkard or violent or greed, greedy for gain, but hospitable, a love of God, good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold form to the trustworthy word as taught, so that he may be able to give instruction in sounding doctrine and also to rebuke those who contradict it. For there are many who are insubordinate, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision party. Brothers and sisters, those qualifications given to this, uh, those elders that the Paul is meeting in Miletus. So they were supposed to uh, the minister, do the ministry after Paul's departure. However, Paul is mentioning about what's, what had happened. Verse 29 says, I know after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Not sparing the flock means to kill, to destroy all the flocks. The fierce wolves, they are the false prophets, false ministers. Paul is leaving, however, still there is a chance that the fierce wolves will come into the church to destroy. As Jesus said in John chapter 10, the thief comes only to steal, uh, you know, steal and kill and destroy. 
to steal and to kill and destroy is that is the intention of the thief is to come. Thief with a title and with a cover, with a mask of the shepherd. They come into the church and they steal, they kill and destroy. So we all need to be alert. We all need to be careful because of the false prophets. And the first John uh, chapter 4, verse, verse 1, we find, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God. For many false, false prophets have gone out into the world. Yes, brothers and sisters, how many, how many heretics are here existing, threatening the churches? You know what, the evident, uh, and clear, uh, you know what, the heretics are found like, uh, uh, you know what, uh, the Mormons and uh, 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 Unification Church and uh, uh, Jehovah's Witness. However, they are unnamed, very similar, but quite different at the end, uh, you know what, uh, heretics found in the church as well. They are destroying the flocks. They are not sparing no flocks at all. So that's the difference. But the Lord Jesus Christ was the one who lays down his life for the ship. Same thing found in Paul as he said, Remember me what I had done together with you over three years. There I taught you. I had ministry day and night with tears. With tears means with the sacrifices. With his laying down his life. For the Lord Jesus Christ, for the church as the body of Christ Jesus. And verse 30 says, And from among you, uh, own yourselves, will arise men speaking uh, tw twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Speaking uh, twisted things. What does that mean? Twisted thing is not the truth at all. Remember what Jesus said. The truth shall make you free. The truth is not the truth at all. It is a straight one. It is, you know, transparent one, clear one, one, upright one. You know what? Everything is clear from above. But twisted things come from human people. Wickedness. Intention is to destroy and to kill and to remove. Brothers and sisters, we all need to be alert. Remember what Paul did in his ministry for three years, as he said, remember me, what I have done. That in, implies that the remember the Lord Jesus Christ, who was in me in my ministry. This is the way that we do have the ministry. Brothers and sisters, Jesus has called, so he is in me, in us, leading us, and speak, make, commanding us to do what? Uh, yes, what Jesus taught us. That is supposed to, we supposed to speak. Uh, many, uh, you know, individuals and uh, uh, ministers and uh, pastors, they do uh, private, uh, privatization of, uh, uh, the, you know, uh, holy things and holy institutions that God appointed. Uh, like uh, leaving a fish to a cat. Cat is not keeping uh, the fish safe, no. Cat is destroying and uh, uh, eating away, sparing not at all. So here we find uh, uh, the heretics who are uh, uh, you know, at the, uh, taking care of their own stomachs only. They do not care of the flux. So we all need to test the spirits. Not all spirits we are supposed to believe, but we need to test the spirit to see whether they are from God. How do we test? What is the criteria we find, we can test, we can examine? Yes, it is the word of God. The word of God is the light to us, to the path we are walking. And it is the lamp to our feet as we are walking together. Brothers and sisters, this is the way that we study the Bible. Possessed by the Holy Spirit, who is teaching us, who is making us remember what Jesus Christ is teaching. Brothers and sisters, 
Paul is leaving the church of Ephesus after three years ministry. Maybe he has some uh, worries and cares about the future ministry. That's why he is speaking to the elders in the church, uh, uh, of the Ephesus church, church. But finally, ultimately speaking, he is laying, uh, you know, the leaving the church into the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ and the word of God, which we will, we will find in the final session. Next Sunday, I'm preaching on that. This is the way that Paul is now leaving the church. However, he is not discarding the church at all. Uh, he is carrying the church still. Because he is now leaving the church to the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ and the word of God. And uh, he is now heading to Jerusalem and uh, eventually to Rome. There uh, he killed Martha. But before he was writing another epistle, ministry by the writing to Ephesian church. The Ephesian church was supposed to read that epistle. Ephesians chapters 1 to 6. Wonderful, beautiful teachings found. So this is, is, is not the last time that he preaching to Ephesian church. But he, God gave him graciously another chance to do the ministry. Never ending ministry. Never ending ministry. Paul is now doing this. That was possible only when he laid down his life for the church like Jesus Christ did for the church that he obtained by his own blood. Brothers and sisters, we leave the church after ministry. Still, we have the next generation ministers following. However, we have a responsibility to teach them what to do as the imitation of ourselves. It was possible only when we did all the ministry in the mind of, in the heart of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So this is very important, crucial point that Paul says, remember me, what I did in three years together with you. But that implies that Lord Jesus Christ, you are supposed to remember whom gave me the chance to ministry uh, of you there in Ephesus. So Jesus is, uh, Paul is now uh, introducing Lord Jesus Christ together with the next generation ministers, the elders. To conclude my sermon, I do uh, ask you to think about Revelation chapter, one, uh, chapter 2 and 3, especially chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, where John was writing about Ephesian church, that Jesus Christ was Sending the letters to the seven churches in Asia Minor. The first one was the church in Ephesus. The same church now Paul is leaving. There Jesus Christ is mentioning this as Paul, as John writing. But I have this thing against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. What a painful indication of the weak point of the church in Ephesus. But I am, uh, uh, but I'm having against you that you have abandoned the love you had first. The first love you will have abandoned. What does that mean? The first love that Paul had the three years in his ministry. Maybe some more, some more time because the three year be the uh, third missionary mission trip period. But he planted the church in the second mission trip. So, Three years plus. That be the first love that Paul ministered day and the night, teaching, admonishing with his tears. He laid down his life there. He was endangered, as you know, in Ephesus. He was put into prison, and he was put, uh, in a prison dangerous, and uh, uh, he uh, was that horrible. Maybe uh, he mentioned in uh, uh, the Corinthian uh, the letter, uh, Corinthians the letter to Corinthian church, that in Asia, especially in Ephesus, he was endangered up to the point of death. He said, probably I was at the death sentence. Maybe I thought I would die there. So that point, up to the point he did he, all the ministry, dropping the tears. 
Point is, however, about some 30, 35 years after, when John was writing the Revelation, Jesus is mentioning through the hands of John that you, the church of Ephesus, abandoned the love of your first love. What a sad testimony it is. Is the church of Jesus Christ, the church of God failed then? Not at all. No, no. Even the church of Ephesus lost the first love. Still, Jesus, after 35 years, is now mentioning, you go back to first love. You obtain the first love and leave. If not, I'm going to remove your sight of the church away from you. Second chance, Jesus is giving. You go back to first love. As Jesus appeared in Galilee, uh, seashore of the Galilee, where uh, his disciples, seven disciples were fishing again. Who was called? Who were called the fishers of men? But they came back to fishers of fish. And Jesus gave them again the second mission. As he commanded you, throw your net, you cast your net to your right hand side. And the 153 fish they got. And there they, they uh, recognized it was Jesus Christ. And Peter came into the sea to go to the Lord Jesus Christ. There Jesus said, okay, you come and eat the breakfast. Jesus prepared the fish and the bread. Like uh, he fed 5,000 with uh, five loaves of bread and the two fish. Same thing happened here uh, in the seashore of Galilee in the early morning after Jesus lived again. Second chance given to the disciples, especially to Peter. So second chance be given to this church Ephesus in the writing of Revelation, especially chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, given to Ephesian church. My brothers and sisters, think about yourselves. How have you been? If there was something missing, don't worry about that. Today is the day when Jesus is giving the second chance. Jesus is good. Giving the chance. Not only just giving the chance, but also he promised, I will be with you. Come on, I will be with you. I will find you. I will bring you to the house of God. Let us trust in Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your loving us this much, giving the second chance. Uh, as you give us the ministers like a Paul to the church, Ephesus, and showing the wonderful, miracle, and beautiful dedication as minister, laying down uh, the life so the church had the first love. But unfortunately, the church lost the first love but God didn't destroy the church because of that, but gave the church another chance. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your giving us another chance so that we are now coming to you as repenting our sins. We thank you for your welcoming us home. In Jesus' name we pray.